want to announce the next um, session, which is the hackathon. And I'm so excited for this because we have seen so many amazing projects that were built by people in Africa. So to kickstart the hackathon, uh, finalist pitch, I want to call on stage Mr. Femi Longe, the program director for B Trust. Give him a round of applause, guys. Before I, before we call the finalists on stage, um, we want to steal a tiny bit of time to make a quick announcement from B Trust. Can I invite Kala, one of the directors of B Trust? on stage. All right, hi everyone. Uh, I'm just gonna take five minutes of your time. Um, oh, there's a picture of me. That's gonna be up for the full five minutes because I don't have any slides. Um, but as Femi said, I am one of the board members of B-Trust. I'm very fortunate to work with Obi Najoma, who you just saw speaking, and Abubakar, who's the fourth board member who was on a few panels this morning. You're gonna to have to forgive my notes. Uh, after Femi's slides didn't work yesterday, I am very worried about not being able to rely on my notes. So, here we go. Um, I'm gonna speak very briefly about how B-Trust is thinking about and going about supporting African Bitcoin developers who are interested in Bitcoin open source. Our mission is to locate, educate, and remunerate software engineers in the global south who are interested in com contributing to Bitcoin open source. And that third piece of it to remunerate is something that's very important to us as a team because generally to get into Bitcoin open source, engineers need to take the time to build up a portfolio and establish some reputation within existing open source projects. And historically, the way that this has gone is that developers need to quit their jobs and take time to work for free to build up that portfolio before they can be funded to work on open source. And that is not something that we feel is feasible in an African context where remuneration and livelihood are such an important piece. And we don't think that Bitcoin developers should have to work for free to be able to contribute to Bitcoin at the highest levels. So what we've done is we've put together a program called the B-Trust Builder Program. And you'll see a few people with that on their shirts here. We're all here together which provides African Bitcoin developers the opportunity to be introduced to Bitcoin open source. And this starts off with a three-month program, which provides an introduction to key technical principles, uh, some education around the operation and etiquette of open source, and finally, the opportunity to start building that open source portfolio. And this is a part-time course because we want to be responsible about bringing people into the space and making sure that this is something they actually want to pursue before we ask them to move to full-time. And successful graduates of this three-month course will be able to enter into a six-month starter grant program where they have the opportunity to build out that portfolio with support from existing Bitcoin open source developers. And our goal is to position them to be able to, in those six months, build that portfolio with remuneration so that they can then apply to grants in the Bitcoin ecosystem. Um, they're open to apply to any grants, but of course, B Trust is one of the organizations that gives grants. And we have an open source cohort. I hope Vlad is in the room. Um, if he is, give, there he is, just walking in, woo! So Vlad is our first member of the B-Trust open source cohort. He's been with us for over a year, contributing to both BDK and LDK. And he was very brave to take the jump and do this completely on his own. And today I am very pleased to welcome his coworkers. So where are Novo and Abubakar Sadiq? If you guys could stand up. Abubakar's here. Novo, I think the timing might have got where you. Welcome to B-Trust. Everyone please give them a hand. Uh, Abubakar and Novo are both graduates of our previous program and they will be spending the next six months starting in January working on Bitcoin open source. Novo on, woo! <laughs> Novo will be working on the silence payments proposal which improves privacy on the base layer alongside Bitcoin core contributor Josiah Baker. And Abubakar will be contributing to Bitcoin Core. I really hope you all caught his talk yesterday where he's working on improving fee estimation for Bitcoin Core. Um, and I'm conscious that I'm taking up the hackathon time, so I want to just give one call to action before I'm rushed off stage, and that is that 
A big part of this mission is to locate developers. And this is not something that the four of us or the B-Trust team can do without the people in this room. So please think about whether you as an engineer or someone who might know engineers are interested in this type of program. We are taking applications for a part-time course starting in January. And as Femi said yesterday, I hope that this can be the, re the beginning of the rewriting of the African narrative. And I'm looking forward to these three developers and many more to come in, to be the beginning of that story. Thank you. Thank you, Carla. So before I, before I invite the, the startups to pitch, we have eight startups that will be, eight ideas from the hackathon that will be pitching today. One of the things we did different in this hackathon for this year is that we launched this open board where anyone who has a problem that they think in, in Africa or anywhere, a utility problem that they would like somebody to build a solution for, they can go and dump it on that dream board. Or if you're thinking of building a Bitcoin startup, but you don't know what problems exist that you can build it for, you can feel free to go to this board and copy one of the ideas and build. And that board is consistently open. So there's the QR code there. It, be, it would like if you can um, take a picture of it, scan it, go on there. We want to make this an open place where we can crowdsource problems in Africa that we can build Bitcoin solutions for. So we had 37 ideas entered for the hackathon this year. Um, it was a very tough job selecting the final eight. Three meetings, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Eventually we did. And they're going to come up to pitch. Unfortunately, we have only a little time in the, in the agenda. So each of them will have three minutes, a quick rapid fire pitch. Unfortunately, you will not be able to, we will not be able to ask them questions. But you'll see them, you'll meet them, and then tomorrow we'll announce the winners. But beyond these eight, there are 29 other very interesting ideas. So if you go to the website, um, the team, will, you'll, you'll be able to see them. And if you're interested in supporting any of them, please reach out to us and we'll be able to connect you to them. Without further ado, can I invite the team from Splice Africa to pitch? Mobile money works in Africa because of the existing network of agents that we have. It is in our culture, it is in our culture to use these agents in order to move money. Uh, so Splice is essentially a cross-border payment solution that leverages on this network of agents as well as the Lightning Network in order to move money across borders seamlessly. At Splice, we believe that in order to onboard users onto Bitcoin, we, we don't need to change their culture, we just need to create solutions that work seamlessly. So the main problems that we're trying to fix is the high fees that users experience when trying to send money across borders, as well as the amount of time that it takes to do so. We have a quick demo, uh, a live demo. So we are going to call someone in Nairobi, Kenya to try and send money to us here in Ghana. So this is an agent in Kenya that we tried to onboard. They are going to try and send us 20 CDs. The first thing they'll do is to create a wallet, choose the country, input all their information like mobile number. So that's their transaction history. Now they're going to try and send us money, and we try to onboard an agent who is here with us. Michael. That is Michael, who's our Ghanaian agent. So she's inputting Michael's details, as well as the amount that she's going to send to him. Hello? Hello? 
I can't hear them. They hear us. Yes, we can hear you. <laughs> okay. So she's requesting an invoice on Lightning. Okay. That's yes. the amount in Kenya shillings that she's sending. I'm receiving the money. <laughs> That's the amount in Kenya shillings. Okay, we can see it. Goja. Yeah. Okay, so she's done with sending. Michael. So thank you. We will be around for any questions. Thank you. Our next, thank you. Our next team, um, the idea proponent couldn't come, but he sent a video. Um, views. Views. Power marketing for everyone. So here's the problem. African businesses currently spend billions of dollars yearly to promote their products and services on social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And on the other end of this is African digital publisher, like me and Project Lead Ad Views, where we are building this power marketing for everyone. So here's the problem. African businesses currently spend billions of dollars yearly to promote their products and services on social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And on the other end of this is African digital publishers and creators who earn less than their counterparts for actually promoting ads on their social channels like YouTube and Instagram. An example of businesses like this is Rachel, who owns a small business where she sells electronic gadgets like phones, computers, and laptops. Rachel has been able to get a couple of customers through referrals, and now she's trying to scale up her business. And to achieve this, she would need to start promoting her products on social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram. But she's frustrated because she would need to buy the dollar um, and with the ever, exchange, ever increasing exchange rate of the dollar to the Naira, this is a burden for her as her business currently ends her in Naira. And on the other, an example of creators is Thomas, who is a blogger that writes about tech trends and new gadgets. Thomas has been able to amass a lot of following for his blog, um, but he has been unable to monetize his websites using Google AdSense because of the many requirements of KYC that Google AdSense requires. Ad views by making it possible for anyone anywhere to end SATs by leveraging on their digital platforms to promote African businesses. And here is how it works. As a digital creator, you can sign up on the platform and easily integrate your digital platform using a simple code snippet. Then companies big or small can join views to create ads and fund these ads using Bitcoin or their local currency. And then the platform automatically re recommends ads based on the target niche and pays SATs immediately to the publisher's wallets based on interactions on the ad. We've been able to build four main features into views, authentication for people to sign up. Um, companies can also create ad campaigns and fund these ad campaigns using their local currency and, and Bitcoin. And then we've also been able to set up real-time integration for re analytics to enable um, views to be tracked when um, campaigns are viewed. Our revenue model is very simple. We earn a 5% commission on every ad created on views. We also earn a 1% processing fee for paying out fiat to creators who do not wish to be paid in Bitcoin. And we also have a 500,000 SATs premium fee for businesses who wish to reach a large audience in a very short period of time. Um, by leveraging on the Live Night Network, we are able to provide instant payouts to creators. And we also plan to leverage on AI to provide niche-based advertising to um, viewers of ads to ensure that they only see ads that are relevant to them. Our team is quite diverse, made up of Rachel Magaji, who is a product designer with four years of experience. Myself, I'm a four years, I have four years of experience in software engineering, and Mavilas Bironke is also a software engineer with four years of experience. We are looking to raise $50,000 in pre-seed to fund our private beta. We're also looking for business mentorship and support. Um, our next steps after this is to leverage on social media to get as many creators as possible to sign up on views. And we are also looking to build third-party integrations with website builders like WordPress and Wix to enable easy integration for creators 
Um, we would like to invite you to join us on our journey to enable African businesses to go viral with Bitcoin. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Mava Pay. Hi, everyone. My name is Bamdi Oluwatobi, and I'm here to prevent Mava Pay. So, what's Mava Pay? Mava Pay is a money transfer API on Lightning. And what do we do? Mava Pay is a solution for businesses to instantly pay. To, is, a, is a solution for businesses to instantly pay out into bank and mobile amount, mobile money accounts using bitcoins. And what's the problem? How do I accept Bitcoin payments without exposing myself to volatility? Also, how do I easily convert Bitcoin into local currency for everyday to day use? So first off, businesses want to receive payments. They want people to patronize their businesses. But how do you get to do that? So we provided an API that allows people to accept Bitcoin. At the end of the day, they get the settlement in their local currency, mobile money in any country in Africa. So that's just our solution. MavaPay is an API as a service that enables businesses, enterprises to convert between fiat currencies using Bitcoin as a settlement layer. No daily reconciliation, it's instant. No counterparty risks, you don't have to wait for anybody. You don't have to put money with anybody, just get your payments instantly. <coughs> demo, please. I would like to play a demo. I would have loved to have a live demo, but I can't trust the demo to God. And also, time is not my end, so please, if you need a demo after this, please just reach out to us and we'll get to your demo. Hi guys, demo. Yeah. So yeah, you, this is a, a prototype application. We call them Bitcoin Uber. It's trying to pay the Bitcoin driver. The Bitcoin driver used Kuda bank account in Nigeria. It has his phone number, that's his name. This is the amount. He gets this code. And once he clicks pay, a lightning new voice pops up. Yeah, you scan the lightning invoice. Once you pay, the user receives his money in error, and that's all. No third party instant set to melt, and we are good. So yeah, please, if you want a live demo, please just reach out to us and we'll demo this to you live. Um, yeah, our payment is successful. Thank you very much. The team is a team of four. We have Emmanuel, we have Teofilers, we have Tracy, and we have myself. Yeah, these are pictures, and we are very open to questions after this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Can I invite Bit Pension? Um, imagine 10, 15 years from now when you're like old, tired, and you want to retire and enjoy the fruit of your labor. And you realize every single savings you've had in the last 10, 20, 30 years has been lost to inflation and gross mismanagement. My name is Ola Inka, and I'm being pension. So at Bean Pension, we are building a personalized pension platform where you have total control for individuals and employees. So basically, in the last two years, $3.2 billion gratuity has been unpaid to, to pensioners across four African nations, Nigeria, Kenya, Algeria, and um, Egypt. The reason why, there is no money, right? <laughs> And the most strike, that is pale in comparison to the fact that we have over 400 million working class population that have no pension scheme or plan that covers them. Only 10% 10 of, 10 of them have any form of pension that can even guarantee that we have a financial leverage. So because of this, uh, we have a current reality where we have people going on the street begging government to give them pension. Pension that they willingly contributed to. And out of these people, I don't want to be one of those statistics. So because of this, my team and I decided to build a solution, which is a Bitcoin personalized pension platform that makes it easy for you to have total control over your pension. You have visibility into your pension investment on the Bitcoin. And because we are looking to adopt as much people as possible, we decided to build a Fedimin pension model where existing financial institutions can incorporate this Bitcoin, a bit pension model. Um, because we want to validate this idea, we've reached out to over 80 companies, formal and informal, and 27 of them are committed to use bid pension with over 200 of their employees already. <laughs> uh, 
An unfair advantage we feel we have in the market is the fact that Bitcoin is the underlying asset. Bitcoin in the last decade has been the most valuable asset class across industries. We have um, potential in, um, partnership in view with Bitcoin investment companies, and we have a team that is valuable. We, we are experienced in building product in finance across any sector, and we've built a um, successful product already. Our business model is simple. We are not innovating in business model. We're using the existing business model in the pension scheme. But the beauty about big pension is the fact that we could have lower fees as a result of the technology we are using. So this is my team. We are the ones trying to revolutionize pension scheme across Africa to make sure at the end of the day, when you're done working and trying to rest and enjoy your life, your money is always there waiting for you. Thank you for having us. Stealth money. Yeah, Bitcoin custody is something that is um, pioneered by most Bitcoiners. Uh, they encourage you to self-custody your Bitcoin and the system, not your keys, not your coins. Well, that is currently a problem for people who are new to Bitcoin because they know little to nothing about self-custody and most of them run to um, custodial applications. So we are Stealth Money, we are a team of three, two engineers and one operations person. We build um, a tool that can help onboard new users to self-custody their Bitcoin in a very seamless uh, manner, uh, such that they don't have to go through the barriers of learning what, self uh, what it entails um, before going through the orders uh, of doing self-custody. Uh, our mentor for the hackathon is Abubaka, someone who pioneered self-custody. And with our mentor, we identified a problem, and two problems come to mind. The first one is currency devaluation. Due to currency devaluation, if you save your money in um, local fiat, there's a possibility if you keep that money in the bank, within the coming few years, your money will become worthless. Why? Inflation affects it and you have very little money left. You have little spending power. Uh, as Bitcoiners, we also like to pioneer not your keys, not your coins, and uh, we encourage users to also use um, non-custodial ways to be able to save their Bitcoin. How will our application work? There's a demo that I'll be showing, a video demo, uh, if you could play that now, and I'll just walk you through the application that we are made to ease self-custody. So here is the dashboard we created, a live dashboard. Basically, you can enter amount in Naira. Um, sorry, we just need to get to this face. <laughs> All applications have a login screen. Yeah, so basically, you enter an amount that you want to um, custody. We know you're new to Bitcoin. You give us the Naira. Um, you click on buy now. We tell you the equivalent amount of SATs you'll be receiving. You give us um, a wallet address that you want us to send it to. Now, we prefer you give us a wallet address that you generated from your hardware wallet or one you generated from your, um, from your custodial wallet, if that's what you prefer. And we give you a quote, and we tell you this quote expires in this amount of time. So we give you a static virtual account number, you pay it into the uh, um, bank account number, and once you receive the payment, we forward the Bitcoins directly into your um, hardware wallet, the address generated from your hardware wallet, or we forward it to the address that you specify to us. And now we have no control over that Bitcoin, but you have control over it. You've self-custodied your Bitcoin by converting your fiat to Naira. That is the solution that we built at Stealth. And we hope that this will solve a real problem for those who are onboarding to self-custody in Africa. Thank you. So, Navis, are you ready? Skill bits. Are you ready to watch history being made? Or you want to be part, or you would like to be part of the history? 
a Miss African Evergreen Digital Revolution. Aisha is a talented Bitcoin developer in Nairobi, Kenya. A Miss African Evergreen Digital Revolution. Aisha, a talented Bitcoin developer in Nairobi, Kenya, is an example of untapped potential, skill bit seeks to unleash. Aisha faces hurdles in finding opportunities and gaining recognition. Like many other African Bitcoin professionals, in the other hand, companies like Spendu, aiming to transform customers' interactions with Bitcoin technology, find it very, very difficult to be able to find skilled talents within the Bitcoin ecosystem. Skillbits. It's not just a platform. It is the missing link between individuals like Aisha and companies like Spendu. With Skillbits, with Skillbits, Aisha can be able to showcase her skills and be visible and opening doors to the wall of so many possibilities. While with companies like Spendu, with Skillbits, they can be able to see and discover a lot of bit African Bitcoin talents. Here is the milestone that we have been able to achieve. And by next year, this is the next milestone that we will be able will be able to achieve. Le we are leveraging transactions in Bitcoin, eliminating the reliance of traditional payment methods. This is a, an innovative approach that is going to be the key potential to unlocking a lot of things. With an estimated of 175 million freelancers, Africa's freelance market is a sleeping giant, ready, awaiting explosive growth. With Skillbit, we are going to capture 5% of this market as well as generating, using 5% of, using 5% of each project completed in Bitcoin. Our revenue model for Skillbits is a small commission fee, as well as a premium fee which ensures the sustainability and growth within the digital economy. So these are our competitors, AfriBlox, TalentsQ, QL, Softworks. What differentiates Skillbit with our competitors is we are, Skillbit is, it's a user-centric, it has a user-centric approach and also focus only on African Bitcoin talent. Here are the teams of Skillbits. <laughs> Invest in Skillbits <laughs> and be the champion of African Bitcoin talent. <laughs> that a platform where it connects, empowers, and generates young talent in Bitcoin. Thank you. Can I invite now 
bit spent. Hi, I'm Joshua, and I'm here to present to you BitSpend, an electronic wallet that uses the Lightning Network to provide Africans a seamless, reliable, and affordable B2C cross-border payment solution. According to a recent McKenzie and Company report, wallet payment is expected to grow by 25% in 2025, exceeding debit card, which is just expected to grow by 17%. Now, this brings us to the problem with B2C cross-border payments in Nigeria and across Africa, which stems from the usage of debit cards, which are quite messy, as you can see. This makes the process quite unreliable and expensive. There is a prominent alternative which tries to solve this issue, which is the virtual dollar cards. This product first seems incredible, but later turns out to be quite inadequate. That's why we brought about Brisbane, which is a consumer electronic wallet that uses the Lightning Network to provide a seamless, reliable, cross-border payment solution. Bitspend uses two features which differentiates it from other platforms. It uses the Lightning Network, and it also has a local wallet feature, which offers an easy method for users to deposit, withdraw, and pay in their local currency. This shields them from the volatility of Bitcoin and also provides them with a fiat method. The process of bit spend is quite simple. Um, there's meant to be a, a demo here. But, so the process of engagement with bit spend is simple. It starts with user's authentication and wallet creation, followed by deposits. Then when it's time for payment, the user gets a Lightning Network invoice from the business and pays it into the platform, upon which the transaction details would be displayed. On proceeding with payment, the Appropriate amount in fiat is deducted from the user wallet, and the exact amount in Bitcoin is sent to the business. The business model for Bitspend is quite simple. We plan to charge less than 1% of payment transaction, all thanks to the affordable nature of the Lightning Network. To develop such a wonderful product requires a wonderful team. The team members include three capable software engineers and an excellent compliance lawyer. We thank you for your time and consideration, and we hope you join us as we transform the B2C cross-border payment in Africa with Lightning Network. Thank you. Thank you. Last but not least, Sats to go. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Tinus uh, from South Africa, uh, part of the Sefrikits and Bitcoin Ikazi. And uh, although we have a great program, we are still experiencing some challenges with time and attendance, ranging from late arrivals to overdue tasks. And with this said, I am here to highlight a major global concern and present an exciting solution. So, um, according to one of the latest Gallup surveys, it is stated that most employees are quietly quitting, with one of the critical uh, reasons being disengagement. And this results in low morale and um, low performance and negatively affects the bottom line. But this report also states that these quiet quitters know what they want to see change. They want to work in organizations that foster um, um, inclusive culture with fair pay and practical benefits. And since all our employees are already being paid in full in Bitcoin, we ask ourselves, what if we could improve engagement through punctuality rewards utilizing the Lightning Network? So myself and Chidi set out to bootstrap this project and craft a solution not for a market, but with a market. We are the client. And we are creating this utilizing tools such as Allen Bits, building on Voltage, and doing all this with a laser-eyed focus on improving engagement utilizing the Lightning Network. So without further ado, I present to you sets to go punctuality rewards, and this is how it works. An organizer schedules an event, much like you would schedule a Google Calendar invite, except this event comes with a punctuality condition. Um, the, the invitee then registers um, uh, through the Lightning Logging, linking them to the event. 
A check-in QR authenticates attendance, activating a condition check, and if successful, allows them a SATS reward to be accumulated. With the option to either huddle, use it within the sats to go ecosystem, or to transfer it. This AAA approach of authentication, activation, and accumulation allows sats to go to be deployed in a variety of ways, from time and attendance um, to event coordination, all whilst encouraging and supporting the Bitcoin eco um, circular economy. And we also apply gamification elements such as, such as badges, badges and tiers to improve engagement even further. And this is very relevant because at this stage, about 70% of Global 2000 companies have incorporated gamification in one way, shape, or form. And 89% of employees report that gamification elements enhances their sense of productivity in the workplace. So to wrap up, sats to go is a catalyst for change. How will you incorporate it to improve engagement through punctuality rewards? Thank you for your time. I ask that we give those teams a hand once again. Let's go. To, to, to give you additional context, these guys have been working on these ideas for the last couple of months. We, we have them on Discord. We've seen the active engagement all through the process. Part of the criteria that we're using to assess them is building in public. Um, for a lot of them, it's their first time pitching anything or pitching a, a, a business. And we're hoping, and this is just the tip of the iceberg, of the amount of application solutions that we know exist in this continent. Tomorrow we'll know who the winner is. We'll be announcing the winners tomorrow. Um, the prizes are $5,000 in SATs wow. for the first um, 3,000, I think, for the second. Wow. 1,500 for the third team. Wow. And then a special prize of $1,000 for the best design. Wow. So, <laughs> the reason why we ask them to pitch is because we know there may be people in this room who can help them beyond this pitch. So if any of those ideas caught your interest or you want to explore further and see how you can help or you have a suggestion for how they improve it, the guys are around in the conference. Please reach out to them, engage them, and let's, let's get these guys off. So that next year when we come for ABC, perhaps we'll be using SATs to go and, and be getting rewards or using any of the other solutions in our engagement uh, in our day-to-day -day lives. Thank you all very much. Yeah.